Hey, welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to block out a basic uh, city scene like this and talk about some of the benefits why I think using a free software like Blender can be very effective for helping you with perspective and scene layouts for your comics. Uh, so by the end of it, I'll show you how to even add a little bit of details, not much, but enough to kind of get you started uh, using the array modifier and stuff like that. So without further ado, let's jump in and practice some Blender. So I think this software is fantastic. It's open source and free, so give it a try. Uh, it can really help you open your mind to different uh, ways to lay out your scenes. Uh, but what I wanna show you here is how it can help you with your perspective drawing, just by starting out with some of these blocks and then scaling them up uh, like some various buildings. So move tool here allows you to go up and down like this. You grab any one of these handles you know, lock into that um, that angle. I'm, I'm not going to get a lot into telling you how to control this. I'll get into some basics, but there's better videos out there on the basics of, say, jumping in and learning just the way to maneuver. Uh, again, I want to show you this in a way where it helps you lay out some basic perspective. So I'm going to hit Shift D and copy it, and I can hit X or Y and lock it to one of these axes. I can do Z as well, but we're not going to move the buildings up or down. And then once I get a few of these placed and scaled, I'll go to the side view by hitting three on the keypad and then I'll align them, because you know, I like them uh, to all obviously be in the same uh, horizon line essentially is what I would call this, even though that's not what it is. It's just the uh, center axis for, what is that, Y? See how it's green there, green there? Okay, so um, I'm also going to maneuver this and Get a few of these in place in different scales. So you got your scale here. You can scale on each side like this. Uh, the neat thing about this too is you're, you know, you can rotate these uh, where when you're drawing perspectively, a lot of times in the beginning, you're a lot less likely to maybe rotate a building in your, your perspective because you're like, where do, where do the horizon line or where do the vanishing points go? So I'll be able to show you some of that, how this makes that a lot easier. Uh, again, get lots of variation here, some tall skinny ones, uh, you know, really play around with the, the proportions of it. You can grab uh, your middle mouse button, hold it and just kind of scroll around like this. So that's kind of nice. You can really, uh, you know, start pinpointing what you want to see in this cityscape. Uh, and I'm going to jump back and forth on this uh, and align them as I go, I guess, because it's going to be hard to tell how big I'm actually making these structures if I don't, so. But that's real easy to do. You can scroll in and out with your mouse wheel. And uh, yeah, I, I'm absolutely blown away that, that Blender is entirely free and so super powerful. Uh, I'm having a great time with it. So let me know if you're, uh, you know, what you use Blender for, if you're uh, 3D mix with, uh, you know, your comic art. I think it's super important to play around with different things, uh, especially for me, I get a little bit bored. So it's like if I can jump into something else, else that's still creative, but helps me uh, improve my art in another way. So I always feel like this helps me, you know, think more perspectively, more dimensionally, just by working with things like this. Let's get some smaller ones in as well, because you don't want them all big buildings. It really, really kind of looks silly. Now, another thing that combine this with, uh, I've been doing a lot, um, not a lot, but I've been doing it more, is uh, you jump into um, Google Earth and zoom into various parts of the world. It's super <laughs> freaking cool. Like, not only is it cool to just do for your art, it's just cool in general. Like you can click on the buildings, the various buildings and architecture, and it'll take you to various Google pages that gives you, you know, information on the history of that structure. Very cool. But again, for perspective drawing uh, and visualization, it's super powerful because you get these shots like this and you realize how many small little details and how, and how uh, uh, not entirely straight all of this is. So that's why I'm kind of mixing these around and, and doing all this because at first, I think we tend to think everything's so straight and linear. You know, then we introduce some perspective, but then we keep everything real stiff to a couple vanishing points and you know we don't want to experiment a whole lot from there and that's uh that's where you know looking at these various references and resources can really open up your mind to the way things are um so yeah so lots of variation 
you know, you could easily stack a shape or I'll just sh show you some basic shaping as we go here. So I'm going to select one of the objects we have in the scene here. I'm going to hit tab and I'm not going to take this too far. Uh, I could do other videos if, if you want to see me detail the buildings uh, in greater detail. But uh, basically what I'm going to tell you is when you hit tab, you're isolating that object. So I'm not going to be able to select any of the other objects. Keep that in mind. I'm isolated this one object. Uh, I've got vertex, edge, and uh, face select. I'm going to start with face select. I'm going to go over here to inset faces. I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to drag it down again. I'm going to move it up. Actually, I don't think I needed to do it the second time, but I always do it. So I think it's helpful to have that in detail. I think I'm thinking more of a bevel at that point. And then I'm going to inset the face again. And then I'm going to drag it down. Just real quick like that, we've got a little bit of depth and dimension on that top of that structure. And obviously, like I mentioned, you can get really crazy with this. You can, well, for one, you can do one window and you can use an array modifier over here and you can populate the side with windows really quick. So it's a lot easier than you would think. But you can do like the tops of the buildings, the little air conditioners and little vents and things like that. And you can recycle those. So even though this seems like it might take forever to detail a city, with the array modifier and the copying of those pieces, you could get it done a lot quicker than you think. Now, I know there's softwares out there to do it for you. I know there's assets that you can buy, full city asset, probably go buy a killer one for 50 bucks somewhere on Turbo Squid or something. But that's not what I'm saying. This is more to get you thinking dimensionally. And then once you get to a point where you, you know, you've got a, a cityscape you like, let me do a little bit more of this and I'll show you. We'll, we'll move the camera around and again, um, Say you got a comic where you're doing a, a Spidey type character or whoever. I mean, I think it's it would be worth it to model the buildings and the style in which you like to draw, uh, similar to that, at least the base fo uh, foundational structure of the way that you might draw, and then have that where you can align it any which way with the move of the camera, and then have that as, as reference. Now, I'm not saying trace it. You could, I guess. I would definitely trace the perspective. Uh, but then I would still freehand draw it if you want that very organic, cool vibe. And also, you don't want to get too stiff where you try to trace every aspect of it. And then you're spending countless hours on stuff you don't need to do. Uh, where if you just utilize it as, as your own source material and then redraw through it, you're going to probably get something that looks more organic, more interesting, and you're not going to waste absorbent amounts of time. This should be a time saver, not a, not a time killer. Uh, so... Let's go, uh, let me get out of tab here and get back to shift. And I, I, I'll probably detail a little bit more, but let me let me get a few more of these in here. Cause you gotta, you know, you can see that if you don't have enough of these in play, it's just not going to be as interesting of a, of a setup. But notice how just, you know, every now and then rotate a building or two. Cause it, you'll see that too, like I said, with the whole Google Earth, the buildings are very, you know, there, there'll be a majority of them that are straight. I guess maybe I don't know. So it, it really depends on how old the uh, the uh, town is or, or city. Um, you're going to notice a very different uh, you know orientation of everything, and the, the masses of the land and the the buildings based on the age. I think you know so older older areas like um, you know like Rome or something are pretty interesting to check out, and um, you know just just all oh, just search for whatever pops into your mind whatever you know go visit go visit scotland later today you know it's so it's so super cool that you do that um all right so shift d and let's again i gotta play around with the scale some more maybe some mid-sized ones uh, another thing that you'll see that's pretty common um i notice this when i drive through like uh, the city of detroit you'll see buildings that are like just like almost like a um I always think like a brother and sister building. You know, it's like they're they're like the same building and they built it twice. Um, and a lot of times the same company. Well, obviously the same company does that and they'll make them match. It's pretty cool. And they'll even like tent them the same so they have the same chrome or gold tent. It's pretty sweet. But um, I think, let me, let me just orient this where it's a little more interesting. And then obviously we could combine those as well. So you'll see that with apartment structures a lot where they are um that just looks boring let me try something here let me rotate this one like this 
this one like this. And see how, like right here, I could almost picture doing the, the expressway, you know, kind of spinning around this way, you know, because you're going to have those curving all through there. I'm not going to get in all this, all that right now. Um, and also, you can give it a planar object as well. So, probably should have started there, but it is what it is. I'm no advanced 3D guy. I used to do a lot of this stuff, but got a lot of practice, and now I'm trying to get back into it. And Blender is the way to go. These don't have to be perfect, but. Oh, and you know, there's a quicker way as well if you wanted to. Sorry, should have realized this. You could just go to your, let's see, your Z axis over here and zero these out. Nope, not zero them out. Why is that? It should have worked. Oh, sorry, zero, <laughs> put it back at center. You wouldn't zero that out, but what you could do is find where the bottom, no, because they're all going to have different centers. All right, entirely disregard what I just said. I, uh, that's why I'm not trying to teach you guys Blender. I want to <laughs> reiterate that. Uh, I'm just learning. It's fun to learn. Uh, all right, let's say this is enough. Or you know what? We could probably, well, we could definitely copy this and rotate it all around but i don't want to cheat that much let me just get a couple more of these in and then we'll call it good we'll just grab some of these randomly and throw them over here go back to number three on the keypad drop them down so we don't have some floating buildings all the floating buildings would be pretty cool i'm sure in the near future we'll see that they're not already in existence. Okay, so so basically like this. So now you've got this real primitive structure. And you know what? Let me do this. Oh, I got overlapping buildings. That's not good. Uh, let me just bring this one up over here. Set this one back just because it's got a little more detail. Might as well not waste that detail. Uh, and again, if you want, I can show you how I would get in here and detail this. I can do a part two or something. I'm not sure if you guys are even going to want to see me work in a blender, but it is what it is. So, and I'd probably do a couple larger ones. Like you, I guess the neat thing about lowering the camera angle like this and looking up is you see, all right, you get these two big ones here and the rest looks just not as interesting. You want a few of the variations, in my opinion, that stick out that are even in, in the background. And again, you're gonna look at your source material. You're gonna study what you tend to notice. And you know, maybe one looks proportionately too small. You're gonna adjust that. I'm uh, just going to kind of play around with this. And, and I really think, like, so for me, what I'm doing now, and I've already started working on this, is I've started building scenes from the Blackstone comic. Uh, and my buildings are more futuristic, so they're, they're not as square as these. But you just got to remember, all you have to do is tab into each one of these, go into vertex mode, something like that. I'll select the corners here. I'll move this down along uh, the Z-axis like this. And that along with some bevels and, and I would extrude some areas of the front here and you know I'm going to do lots of little details on the tops of these. It starts to make more sense. And then obviously different window patterns on each one. And a window pattern can be as simple as, um, with the array modifier it can be super simple. And I'll, I'll probably do a quick demo of that before we're done. Okay, so you, you've got some of these built. You've got your camera where you can move it wherever you want. You can look down at it. You can get that worm's eye view going. You know, you can place it wherever you need it to be. Uh, even if it's, you know, the character standing on the edge of a building, like say this one, he's on a smaller build and you want to look up there, you might drop out your, your, um, your bottom plane or something. But you just kind of tighten up in there and you can also play with the, uh, the camera's focal length. I think it's the focal length. But anyways, you do something like that, bam, you can put your character right up there. You can even bring in a model. And again, I'm not saying you draw from this, you, or draw or trace it, you, you know, do whatever feels right to you and whatever helps you get these shapes in your mind. That's the main thing. And then over time, you can pull away from it if, it, if it's not what you want to do, or it's making your work look too 3D generated, okay? But you could pull in a DAS model, set them right there, again, another free software, and that gives you that size relationship, and then you use this as your perspective. So you could see now that these converge up, somewhere off the screen here, you would, you would have a horizon line and your converging vanishing point, 
This would be a three-point perspective. These would converge down to the right. Um, oh, and I'm sorry, your my, my bad. Your horizon line is way down here. These converge down to that. This is the floating one up top that, you know, if you were to connect them all, it's a big triangle, but that's that's not that. It's, it's down here is your horizon line, my bad. Um, you guys probably know that, I'm sure. But you see how they converge. Now let's pick one of the buildings that, that's tilted so that you could see the difference of how you would have that extra that extra one. I, sh I should be able to draw right on here. This would probably make more sense for you. So that building is definitely, these are all at different orientations. So let's see if we went, and that one has an angle too, so I wanna show that as well. Let's say we were right here, okay? And you're trying to figure out the, uh, the horizon line. Uh, so if you look here, the horizon line goes back, sets right about, like if you draw this back, I guess you could see it right back there, right? See how it's kind of faint there? That's our horizon line, so it's going back. It's hitting there, probably this point, I would think, maybe. Um, and then so you draw these back, right? Boom. There is a, I know there's a grease pencil in here. Where is that sucker? Uh, I don't know. It's in here somewhere. I'll, I'll get better at this, folks. Forgive me. So, but anyways, you'd imagine them going back, hitting your horizon line, which is straight, right? These would converge to it. These would converge to it. These would converge off camera or off frame that way. But notice these ones wouldn't, right? And this is where a lot of people get tricked up. But what you do is you find where this one would converge. Boom. It's going to be a lot more uh, in, in frame, right? So, and this would converge to the same one. I think we moved them about the same. If, if we didn't, it'd be slightly off. But each one of these structures, if they're at a different orientation, would be slightly different on the vanishing point, on the horizon line, sorry, with different vanishing points. But that's it. Once you find them, every other piece of this particular part of the puzzle would converge to those. Now, a lot of people will ask, well, how do you find that? It's usually an... Uh, a 90 degree angle off the uh, horizon. I've done videos on that and I can elaborate further. You, you can always find a 90 uh, based on the way that the they converge down. It's something you have to do at the station point, but it's a little more complex than I can get into right now. All I could tell you is, you know, this is going to give you that information, what's in front of us right here. And that's why the beauty of building this uh, can be, it can be so helpful because you don't really have to do all that station point stuff. You're going to use this as your grid. You're going to build your grid off this um, and or just trace the basic shapes right here and then set that to the side. But I still recommend drawing your guides because that's going to give you all the information for everything else. Because what will happen is, you know, you might be pretty good at drawing your windows in here, uh, especially if they're framed because you could, like for instance, you could take, um, say you're working on paper. You can have a ruler, or I use like those roll rulers. You can have one right here on this line and roll down and you're gonna get all your windows. Um, mainly because this is pretty parallel to the horizon line. You can't do that here. So you, you're gonna need those guides, boom, 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 at least some of them. And then you can freehand. You can do the roller ruler thing from this line over. So there, you know, there's times you can definitely use it, but there's times you're also going to need those perspective lines. But this gives you all that information and again, allows you to put that camera wherever you want. So you don't have to build the most advanced city. I mean, <laughs> see what we got here. It's pretty simple, right? But it, it didn't take that long, you know, and, and, and I would say I'm going to save this and I'm always going to build out from this. So let me show you a quick way that I would implement some um, windows, you know, windows into something like, well, I'm going to pick one that hasn't been distorted. I'll actually add one more. You know what, just to make it easier on us, or me, I'm going <laughs> to turn all this off, collapse this collection down. I uh, can't remember if it still adds it in there. Make sure, though, that you're not in uh, edit mode when you add your new object. Reason being, if you're on your last object, even if it's probably in here, it'll probably do it, uh, it will add that to the object. So whenever you add a new object, if you don't want it to be kind of combined with that previous object, make sure you have the shorter window here. And remember, that's just your tab key. This is edit. This is object mode. You can also get to it right here. See the difference? Along with a whole slew of other things. So shift A, mesh, let's do a cube. Oh, and it actually placed it right here. And I'm gonna give you a quick FYI there just because that's pretty annoying. Like if you accidentally move this, which I tend to always do, don't go here and try to replace it like a crazy person. It's not gonna work, uh, or maybe it works and I don't know how to do it, but go shift S and then just go cursor to world origin and then quickly 
click off it because I, I'll do it over and over. It drives me nuts. So anyways, and what happens is every time you add an object now, it jumps into that specific area. So very important to know about that. Um, so let's see, let's go to cube and let's scale this sucker up. Like this, scroll around, take a look at it. No, I wanted to scale it, why did it, right there. So just, you know, a little boxy building like this. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this is just for a quick, you know, way to show you the way I would do it. It's not like there's not better ways, okay? Um, there's probably far better people to teach you how to do these buildings, but I'm gonna show you a quick, uh, quick way to do it. So I'm gonna hit tab, and then I'm gonna hit, uh, is it shift R, I believe? Or is it no? Command R, and that's gonna allow me to place these uh, loops and a loop cut, basically. And then also you can scroll your, your mouse wheel, and you can put these loop cuts wherever you need. So this is a great way to hurry up and kind of trim the building. So I'm gonna just say, I'll say right there, just to get started. Left click, seems like you have to hit it twice, but anyways, left click, you'll see them there. And what's neat about these is, I'm gonna rotate this now by holding the mouse wheel. I'm gonna hold shift, click with the mouse wheel, and drag over all in one kind of thingy motion. And then uh, I'm going to go into edge select mode. And you can select an edge like this, but uh, now I'm on a Mac, it's different on a PC. You're gonna have to check this because I was looking up PC tips and none of them worked. Um, so for, for edge loop select, you can either go like this and go select uh, edge loops like this and you'll see if you go to wireframe it's right through there right other way to do it is hold shift and double click it hold shift double click it uh, i don't think this works on a pc and i know what they tell you on the forums for pcs did not work on the mac and it was driving me nuts because i really like this feature it's super quick uh anyway so we've got these edge loops selected uh let's see we're going to go to bevel so it's kind of crazy because I didn't, I would have never thought you could bevel edge loops, but you can. And what it does, it gives you this nice little bit of thickness really fast. Okay, so you play around with this and this is the trick. So if you're really trying to get good buildings, you have to like really pay attention to proportions. It's very easy to make something look cartoony when that isn't really your goal or whatever. I don't know if that's the right term, but you know, disproportionate. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is go to... Uh, edge region or what edge region extrude region uh, I can't read but see how it does this now if this was one of these it would be fine but what you have to do is you have to click and hold here see it's got a little arrow for rollout go to extrude along normals and then look at that fanciness and so you're like well I wanted an extruded edge but man it looks kind of cool to go like this but anyways I'm, I'm just gonna give the little ridge that you might see on a building keep this pretty simple and see how quick that was and that's so that's one aspect of it. it's really fast to do that we can take this top edge now now another neat thing I'm gonna hold shift and double click is if you bezel bezel bevel what's the what's the way you say that click here my oh, my why is that not clicking shift double click hmm that only works in this mode no something's not right here maybe because I'm on that tool I'm gonna get off that tool click here double click now it's not working. That's super strange. I just showed you it worked. Okay, I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to get into it too much. I'm just going to show you that I've selected the edges here. And I'm going to go to bevel. And notice that the bevel shoots downward and creates that nice little bevel on the top. That comes in pretty handy for you know your building design so they don't look uh, too boring. I uh, might want to bring that out. I'm just going to go with that. And then I'm going to go back to face mode. I'm going to bring this in with inset faces. A little bit. I'm going to extrude that downward. Oh, not that far down. Just a little bit. Just give it that little lip that you see on buildings like that. And then as far as this goes, you could do the same thing. Uh, you can subdivide this. I, I Typically, if I'm building those little pieces on the top, I do those separately just because... I'm not looking for connected assets and there's ways to combine them anyways. I don't know if that's the right way, but all I'm saying is for speed, I would build a couple of those little shapes. Um, and, and I don't want to get into that too much because I'd take time too as well. But I'd build a couple little shapes up there and boom, I'd have the top pieces there. I could surface this as something you know, darker so you can go into surfaces, add new, 
and you can create like a you know a darker surface if you want so it's not so you know if you're trying to get these surfaced out you know which can be helpful as well so it's just up to you but you would add that in I think I surfaced it now yes yeah, so usually I got to go back and do it a couple times but I'm not going to get into surfacing right now all right I'm going to show you some windows in the array modifier and then we'll call it good because I know this is already a long video uh, so the way I would do a window for this now is I would just take this and add another shape. Uh, again, I gotta make sure I'm not in edit mode or it'll combine it. And let's see, go to cube. Let me make a quick window pattern here. I already got like a couple different window patterns, but I don't wanna show you what I already did. I wanna show you how, how I did it. And then you can make your own. But I can also make you some if you want, I guess. I don't know, mine, mine are pretty simple, but. That's all you really need. Okay, so something like this. I'll say the window shape. Let's scale it in a little more. Oh, come on, scale, not move, silly. Okay, and again, I could, you know, I'm gonna do this one with just inset faces. I don't really need to use the, um, the other way. So I'm gonna hit tab here. Grab this face, going to inset it. Inset it again. Inset it again. And I'll drag it back. I'm just gonna show you another way if you make these different edges here. Inset it in like that. So for instance, you can go back in face mode now. You could grab these, holding shift. I'm gonna try that method again, double click. Okay, so it's gonna grab them up and down. So if you double click, it's gonna grab up and down. It's not what we want. And again, play around with this. You could pull it out, drop it back, whatever you wanna do there. Both are gonna look a little more interesting than a plain Jane window. And then maybe a frame up the middle. Uh, so let's see, for this, I think we could just do an edge loop, let's do that. So I'm going to hit, uh, is it Command R? Yep. So when you go to the edge loop, if you're more to the center this way, it's gonna grab horizontally. If you're more in the center this way, it's gonna grab vertically. Again, you can click and you could scroll your mouse wheel or you can right click and it'll go right back to center, that's what I want, and then click once. Sometimes I, have to, I feel like I have to click twice, just FYI. But um, I think because it releases the tool which doesn't make it look visual, visually off. So I'm going to bevel just this middle one and let's see what we get. That should be good. And obviously I could do a frame going both ways, but I'm, I think on a more corporate looking building, it, it's going to look better to do something like this. I'm going to bevel that there. And actually that feels a bit too wide for what I want. Let me go a little smaller here. Remember, you can always control the numeric values over here as well, but I'm just going to do it with this or down here for the bevel. So we got that. Uh, once you click off this, this doesn't pop back up though, so keep that in mind. You have to do this all in one kind of sitting. And then, so I'm going to go right to extrude. I'm going to bring that out a little bit. Nope, again. Now I'm just going to go extrude region. There we go. And I wouldn't want that to come past the frame, but I think it should be as thick as the frame. Uh, and so there we go. I'm just, again, I'm just going to do a real basic window. You can get in here and do all sorts of neat little bevels and bezels and tricks. And you can make this look like a really detailed window. And the beauty of doing it with the array modifier is it makes a lot of sense. Because once you have this initial window, let me show you how easy it is now to apply this uh, to our structure. I'm going to take this window and I'm going to move it. Oh, not just the one selection. Tab, move. And then align it to one of these areas. Scale it way down, obviously. Come on. And then move this to one side. I think I want them on the very top edge. I'd probably do a different design up there. The other thing is you, you kind of want to play around with different patterns because if you just take one pattern and put it everywhere, it's going to look pretty boring pretty quickly. So keep that in mind. 
and uh, you can also leave this raised off the edge just a little bit and it's going to give you the added bit of depth without doing any extra work uh, that's why i like making window patterns separate one of the reasons anyways all right so do i've got the back of the window i think i do well how does that happen anyways all you got to do is come over here and we're going to rotate that along the red one which is the x right so let's do a 180 no? How did I miss that? That's on the Y? Rotation. Okay. Apparently I don't know what I'm talking about. I must have just flipped it. No. Why is this hooker not rotating? It's got to be on one of those axes. It wouldn't be the Z. Oh, that one didn't rotate. 180. Enter. There we go. Goodness. Sorry, people. This is what you get when you deal with me on, on 3D, I guess. But, um, okay, so... Over to here, we're gonna also go to Cavity. It looks a little cooler for the, the 3D. Uh, you can enable some other things to get some better shadows going. But, so we can see our shadows better. And again, you could be bevel these edges more. You could add segmentations for brickwork or whatever. But then when you come down here and click this object, we're gonna go into a modifier here and go to Array. Uh, let's see, we're gonna be shooting this down the, the Y. The Y axis. So right now, uh, there's probably one already there, but it's we're not seeing it. So if we go one here, see it just created another one. Um, oh, so you know what? It's still flipped. So what you have to do is, before we apply this modifier, I don't know why they have to do this, but you do. You got to right click or wait. Is it, oh, which one is it? Shift A. No. Nope. Give me a second here, people. Command A. Right there, all transformations. Uh, now let's try it. You have to reset the transformation so it makes it look like it's fresh to this individual area, or something to that extent. Just, just bear with me. You have to do that. So, um, so now let's try the array modifier. Let's go one this way. Yeah, see how it's level there, but it's not level off this way because I have a one there. I got to zero that out. Now they're even side to side. So just as quickly as that and, and keep in mind you surface this one you detail this one whatever you do is on that one and then now it's as easy as just going boom, 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 and populating the side of that with windows um, and then all you'd have to do obviously is copy that down and do the same thing and so you, you see it's gonna pick up speed quite considerably especially considering you would surface this one there's all your surfaces you know and you know, we're not, um, I'm not going to use surfaces in this. I would just use it as a template to, to get that design going. Uh, and I want to say you could shoot it down the other way too. Let's try it. But I, I think I'd probably copy it. Let's say along the Z axis, we go two. Oh, it's going to throw it off. There's got to be a way to do that. Is it maybe unchecking this? No. Well, at any rate, I would still do it and just go like this. Now, if you want a gap between them, you're going to play with this variable right there. And then you're going to drop your count. So that's going to give you a different look. That's a little bit more of an apartment building. You know, the windows are going to be separated more, hopefully, if people have any any kind of uh, space there. So let's try 1.75, drop another window off the edge. And then we could, you know, go to a straight view like this. Well, the other way, but with the 7. How did I lose my building there? Yikes. Well, I hit something and it made it disappear. There we go. It's the, the something key that I hit. Okay, so let's go back to this. Back to this side. All right. So that was straight, wasn't it? it? Just disappears because of the shading. So let's go to this. And then you see it's, yeah, it's actually centered anyways. But all I would do here is just take this. And you could hit uh, Command D, Shift D, sorry. And then you could drop these down uh, and align them pretty quickly. And then as well as you hit Z, and let's do that. We'll just hit Z and they're already aligned. So we go down to here and then you just have to focus on centering this way. Shift D again, hit Z, already aligned. Yeah, so that would be the way to do that. Shift D, hit Z, aligned. Let's do that a few more times here. Might as well get this 
So I have kind of finished. And then for uh, for bricks, I mean, you don't even have to model them. They've come so far with texture maps and bump maps. Uh, you could do that all with this, and you could even you could even do it in 3D and apply uh, some line modifiers uh, and make it look like it's uh, drawn out. So that you know, if you don't want to look at 3D for your uh, your illustrations or whatever. But there you go. I mean, that's pretty simple, obviously, but you could take that a lot further. I'd probably shrink this down a bit, probably do some different designs up here. You could do corner posts, you could do the things up top, but that gives you some good reference. And I don't know, I don't know if this took too long. You guys let me know what you think, but uh, I think that personally, this is gonna be one of the things that I implement in my own work. I'll share more content on it along the way. Sorry I'm not so proficient in Blender. Uh, you know, I, I studied lightweight for years, so it translates, but then again, I, you know, I'm still trying to figure out the uh, shortcut commands and all that good stuff. So thanks very much for tuning in and watching. I really appreciate the support of the channel. More content is on the way very soon. Good luck with your art, and bye for now.